How are we all feeling today? It's Monday, so that means back to school at home. So here we are, back to our art classes. So my name is Anna Healy Turner. I am the founder of the Creative Collaborative, which is a business that teaches creative workshops to schools and businesses. So here we are doing our art lessons at home. And guys, it was such a beautiful day yesterday, wasn't it? It was sunny and warm and I was in my back garden staying safe. I hope you guys did as well. Um, and I just had the feeling that summer was around the corner. Insects buzzing around and it just felt so great and the flowers are starting to come out. So what I thought would be really cool is to teach you guys how to draw a bumblebee. So I don't know about you, but I love bees. I think they are just the most brilliant creatures. I don't really like many other insects, but I love, love, love bees. I love honey and I love everything about bees. I think they're really, really cool, the way that they pollinate other flowers and create new flowers. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to teach you guys how to draw a really cool bumblebee. All you're going to need for this um, are, it, well, is paper, a pencil and possibly a pen. Guys, we're going to be colouring this in in pencil today, so I want to teach you a little bit about shading. So uh, yeah, so we're going to do this lesson in two parts. Today is the drawing, because although it's simple, it's a fairly complicated um, structure, maybe. And then we're going to be colouring it in with pencils. So you'll need to, for tomorrow's lesson, you're going to need your uh, colouring in pencils. You can use watercolour pencils or just normal pencils if you want to. If you don't have any pencils, then you can use um, felt tip pens. I think they would be probably the best alternative. Yeah, pens. Guys, okay, so let's get started. Right, okay, so we are going to start off drawing our bee in pencil. Um, as always, I'm going to be using my Sharpie pen because you won't be able to, able to see it if I do it in pencil. So, I'm going to use my pen. Guys, use your pencil. Don't be tempted to use pen because you may make a mistake and you may want to rub it out. Um, and you obviously, you cannot do that if you use a pen. So, um, we're going to break this down into shapes, okay, so I want you to think about when you look at animals or when you look at um, anything really that you're trying to draw, what would be, what's a really good trick is if you try and break it down into shapes, so you, like with a flower, you have a circle, don't you, for the middle bit, oh look, my, I'm getting, ha, ah, choked by my lathe, um, and then you have like, round petals that, that are like teardrop shapes and they are around the outline and then a line obviously for the stalk. So yeah, so you're thinking about the way that something is created making it shapes. Oh, I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure it does, does it? But anyway, you know what I mean. Circles. So we're going to start off with this B by um, drawing some circles. I'm going to try and break this down for you. Now, um, can you see? Okay we should bring this in a tiny bit. I wish I could actually chat with you guys and I wish that you could, oh, I'm gonna move my stool that I'm sitting on. I wish that you could sort of say, yeah, I can see it, or no, I can't. Anyway, again, you're gonna have to look at the back of my head. I haven't figured out a way of doing this where um, you don't have to do that. Can you see if I move? Let's just go. Ah, now you can see my horse's eye in the background as well. Right, okay, so we're going to start off with uh, this. I'm going to do a big B on here, on this paper, but you guys can do a smaller B if you want to. It doesn't need to be massive, but it just you just need to follow the shapes along. Right, so pen on paper, pencil on paper, and we're going to draw a sort of a squashed circle a bit. It's like a, a circle that you've sort of sat on a tiny bit. So it's just squished. Imagine going like that, circle, and going squishing it flat a tiny bit. Right, circle number one. Put your pen on the outside edges, so here, and then you're going to do a semi, mm, not a semicircle. it's like a, a fat, Sausage looks a bit like a snow, the basis of a snowman, maybe. Right, so that's circle number one. 
squashed sausage number two or egg shape and then you imagine where the top if this was an egg that was actually behind the circle so it's behind the circle and then you've got then the top the top bit of your egg is going to go around like that touching the lines at the top so this is where it's really great if you're using a pencil because if you make a mistake like I've done there where it's just crossed over a tiny bit you can rub it out to make it all nice and sharp mm -hmm. yeah let's try and be quite crisp with the lines that we're making on this one it's not that important because the bumblebee is super fluffy and fuzzy and that's gonna be how we're gonna color it be be how we coloring it in later right eyes so let's draw two little ovals on the side here now his eyes right now i would say the legs are the trickiest bit about this drawing so you're gonna have to pay attention to this bit and also um count so it might be a bit difficult for me not to do these legs a bit wonky because i'm doing this all at an angle which makes it super tricky anyway we're gonna do look at my pen lid you see the shape of my pen lid we're going to be making shapes a bit like that so very small fat finger shapes and we're going to start here so you see where his head finishes there take your pen around to sort of where the halfway line is and then get up in between there and we're going to do a small fat finger like that and then just to make sure that we're going to get his legs fairly even let's do another one on this side <laughs> that's weird isn't it it looks a bit like what does that look like it looks a bit like a robot right okay we're gonna do another another small small fat finger shape on the end of that one so on the end of that small fat finger small fat <laughs> small fat sausage small fat finger we're going to do another one there. Again, let's try and make them sort of equal as much as we can. There. And then we're going to do a baby finger. A baby finger and an even babier one. An even babier, baby, baby fat finger. Right, bees, when you look at a close up of a bee, they um they have like hooks on the ends of their hands so like captain hook at the end of it they have two of them so um we're gonna do, they're like little they're not pincers because they don't pinch you but they just that's how they grip onto stuff can you see that guys so little hooks at the ends of its hands so that's how they that's how they hook on to the flowers and you know do their thing Right, so it's got two legs there, so bees have six legs, six legs, so we need to do two more on that side and two more on that side. So, we're going to move down now to his abdomen, I can't remember how you, it's called a specific thing when you, mm, when an insect's got like three bits of its body, head, middle body, end body, somebody tell me what that's called maybe I should google it right so in the middle here underneath you imagine like where his waist waistline would be if you were to put a belt on this little guy we're going to do like a triangle not a full fat finger just a half a one like that and then we're going to kind of do a bit of a a bit of a bat shape so a bat as in like a baseball bat not a the flying bat which is a bit like a triangle but has rounded corners okay right at the end of those it's got like a now a thinner skinny finger skin skinny skinny sausage a vegan sausage and then at the end of these we they have that they're like little triangles at the ends I don't really if I'm honest, 
know why they have little triangles at the ends of their legs, but they just do. So we're gonna do three, four actually, four little triangles, and then again, a hook. A hook. Okay, we're getting there, aren't we? Getting there, it looks a bit like a beetle at the moment, but it will turn into a bee. Right, again, semicircle, halfway in his bottom body now. <laughs> bottom body. Semicircle, semicircle, and then long. Mm, what, what would you call that shape? It's like a sausage with a flat end. Sausage with a flat end. And then again, sort of like an ice cream cone shape at the bottom there. One, two, three, four, four mini ice cream cones or triangles. They're not really triangles because they're actually missing the pointy end. So it's like, um, have you guys ever had an ice cream cone that you buy from the ice cream van and then you snap the bottom off? And that's what it looks like. Ah, I thought I had lipstick on my tooth then, but I don't. So I'm wearing my lathe today and I'm wearing my red lipstick because it's a Monday. And Mondays are quite sad, aren't they? So doing things to make myself feel better. What do you guys do to make yourselves feel better on a Monday morning or when you're feeling a little bit sad? I'm not feeling sad by the way, but wearing wearing flowers just makes me feel a bit happy. So what do you guys like to do? Do you um, do you like to go outside and play or do you like to watch some cartoons? Do you like to put on a fancy dress? Hey guys, did you do your fancy dress um, workout with Joe the other day? Joe Wicks, the body coach. He dressed up as Spider-Man, didn't he? Okay. Um, we have two little feet at the ends, two little ovals, and then a hook. Let's just put one hook there, because I actually have only seen a, a picture with a bee and it had one hook at the bottom of his, of his feet at the ends. Legs, middle legs, upper legs. Right. A bee needs some feeler and then eyes. They're like feelers. And I don't really know why they have them, but I think it might be a bit like a cat. So cats have whiskers because it gives them a sense of space. So at night time, a cat can know, um, for instance, if it's climbing through something, where the, where the sides are of stuff by the whiskers because they extend to the edges of its, of its further out from the sides of its body so it can sense stuff like cats. Cat super sense. Um, okay, so, and I think bees might be the same, so here we're just going to kind of put like a big long moustache, really. You imagine like, like it's a French big long moustache at the end there, look. That's cool, isn't it? It does look a bit like a moustache. Okay, guys, we're almost finished with our bee drawing. Now all we need to do is do, uh, to do, can't get my words out today. We're going to draw some wings. Now, these wings we are going to go um how are we gonna do these how are we gonna do these wings mm. right we're going to go uh whoop one line and then put your so the wings come off of this middle body by the way um yeah so they come off of here sort of near the bottom so we're gonna do a whoop line like that a little bit underneath it, let's do another one and do the same that side and then that side. Right, so we're going to frame this upper line here with a big like petal shape that goes around it and the same this side. Like, oh I can't see what I'm doing over there like a petal shape that goes round it, like that. Does that make sense? You can see that, yeah, it's like big paddles. Like, on a boat. Flippers. Okay, underneath, where we did that line here, 
we need to frame that line with a smaller petal shape. It's okay to go over its legs, by the way, guys. So we've done that one, and then this side again. Over the top. And there we are. So it's okay to go over the top of its legs because bees' wings are actually see-through. Um, and have you ever looked at a leaf closely? If you go outside and you get a leaf, this might help you draw this bit, by the way. But it's got like veins that come off the, if you look at the bottom part of the leaf, that looks more like it. It's got thick veins that come off the bottom of, of a leaf, and that's how the plant feeds all of the sugars to the leaf um, to make it green. And so, weirdly, insects' wings look a little bit like that. They look a bit like the underside of a leaf, where you have like all these veins that come off the edges. So if you go outside and you find a leaf and then what you can do is come back inside and where you've got this middle line you're going to do some of those veiny marks with your pencil. On the top one, can you see what I'm doing? Middle line, I know they, these lines do look like they've kind of gone everywhere, don't they? But I hope that makes sense. If you just copy the pattern of a leaf, and you're gonna be all right. Okay. Whoa. Look at all of those lines. Okay. Guys, I think we might leave the bottom wing you can try and do the veining on there as well if you want to but it's a bit complicated and don't worry if you make a bit of a mistake it really it really doesn't matter too much we just want to get some funky lines going in here just to make it look a bit realistic and there we have it that is our bumblebee now we're going to move on and we're going to colour him in, which is going to be exciting. So get your pencils ready, watercolour pencils or just normal um, colouring in pencils and I will see you guys tomorrow.